The world of photonics is advancing the future all the time. It's thrilling, it's intriguing, it's illuminating. And now, a recent acquisition in Germany is proving that the industry's past can be just as exciting. Hello, welcome to this episode of Light Matters. I'm your host, Justine Murphy. History has come to life at Zeiss with the acquisition of a 166-year-old simple microscope that engineers say, given its age and style, was very likely designed and built by pioneering photonics and optics icon Carl Zeiss himself. We'll get back to that a little later. Also on this month's show, we examine California Institute of Technology's work with directed self-assembly of DNA origami onto lithographically patterned binding sites. This technique could enable reliable and controllable coupling of molecular emitters to photonic crystal cavities. And managing editor Michael Wheeler offers a preview of a feature that examines the role of machine vision for inspecting adhesives in the auto industry, available exclusively on photonics.com. But first, let's look at how a new approach to laser ablation could ultimately foil space debris and its threat to space flight and satellite operations. Researchers at the German Aerospace Center have developed a novel approach to laser ablation of space objects that focuses on a secondary effect of laser-induced damage. Specifically, they have simulated laser ablative impulse coupling to space debris targets with the goal of modifying the debris's orbit and achieving its removal by burnup in the Earth's atmosphere. The researchers investigated simple targets as well as realistic space debris targets with respect to momentum generation. They identified targets that were relatively easy to remove by laser ablation and also targets that were strongly dependent on orientation, finding that even slight variations of the initial debris position could lead to significant differences in the trajectories. A laser-based approach appears to be well-suited for space debris removal, according to the researchers, especially when factoring in treatment of any resulting trajectory modifications. As space debris moves at approximately 15 kilometers per second along various paths, it poses a significant threat to spaceflight and satellites. The novel laser ablation approach would remove interference around satellite communications and other related operations. The research was published in Optical Engineering. Automakers are racing to meet federal regulations that call for higher fuel efficiency vehicles by 2025. And to do this, they're turning to carbon fiber reinforced polymers, which are 70% lighter than steel and 40% lighter than aluminum. To join carbon fiber body parts as well as powertrain components, manufacturers are using adhesives that are stronger and lighter than conventional rivets and bolts. In September's web exclusive, industrial photonics editor James Schlett examines how machine vision is ensuring that adhesives are placed on a part's surface in the right location and that each bead is the appropriate width and height. Manufacturers have a growing list of options, including 2D systems for after the glue is dispensed and in-process 3D systems that combine lasers and imagers that provide volumetric information. Don't miss Machine Vision Helps Adhesive Trends Stick in Auto Industry by James Schlett, exclusively on photonics.com. If you're not already subscribed to Industrial Photonics, your global resource on lasers, sensors, machine vision, and automation systems, you can do so for free at photonics.com slash subscribe. Scientists at Zeiss in Germany are holding a piece of history in the palm of their hands. The company's corporate archives department has acquired a simple microscope from Lahntal Germany resident Manfred Eichel, who had purchased it at a pharmacy closeout sale when he was a young boy. Many years later, he has discovered what a rare piece of history this microscope is and has offered it to Zeiss. The microscope dates back to 1850, so it is highly likely that it was designed and built by Carl Zeiss himself. The pioneering legend opened a small workshop for precision mechanics and optics in Jena in 1846. The following year, he began producing simple microscopes. The newly acquired historical microscope is secured onto a wooden base and features original lenses, hand supports, and a rotating diaphragm. It has no discernible serial number, but it has been very well preserved. The device is the first of its kind in the company's collection of historical instruments. This rare artifact will be part of a touring exhibition called Carl Zeiss, a Visionary Entrepreneur, 
that will begin at the Gertag Gallery Mall in Jena on September 5th. It will then go on display at the Zeiss Microscopy Customer Center alongside other historical microscopes. Next month marks Carl Zeiss's 200th birthday too, making this acquisition of the 166-year-old microscope all the more exciting. A tiny reproduction of Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night painting has demonstrated the possibility of reliable, controllable coupling of molecular emitters to photonic crystal cavities, or PCCs. A team at the California Institute of Technology fabricated the image through the self-assembly of DNA origami onto lithographically patterned binding sites. This novel technique entails folding long strands of DNA into a desired shape. The folded DNA then acts as a scaffold onto which nanometer scale components, such as fluorescent molecules, can be attached and organized. The researchers used microfabricated PCCs tuned to resonate at around 660 nanometers, corresponding to a deep shade of red. Created within a thin glass-like membrane, these cavities take the form of a bacterium-shaped defect within an otherwise perfect honeycomb of holes. Fluorescent molecules tuned to glow at a similar wavelength illuminated PCC lamps. By moving DNA origami through the PCCs in 20 nanometer steps, the researchers were able to map out a checkerboard pattern of hot and cold spots where the molecular light bulbs either glowed weakly or strongly. As a result, they were able to use the technique to position fluorescent molecules and in turn create lamps of varying intensity. Similar structures have been proposed to power quantum computers and for use in other optical applications that require tiny light sources integrated together on a single chip. And that's it for this month's show. Check us out on social media and drop us a line with your feedback and suggestions. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining us, and until next time, keep following the photons.